A very good morning students we are in our practical class lecture and this will be the structural geology practicals and in our today's class we will try to calculate the true dip from the two apparent dip values and for such a thing we will follow two methods that is the trigonometric as well as the geometric method so after seeing the heading you will be having a question that is that such a difficult thing to calculate find the true dip in the field yes actually if you are getting an outcrop just like this then you can simply measure the dip strike all those values just by keeping your Brenton over the outcrop. But this is not actually the case. In many cases what happens you may not see the actual outcrop. Then you have to rely upon the road cuts and river cuts, rail cuts all such a thing. In that case what happens if the formation is say inclined and if the road cut is just parallel to the strike of the formation what happens? The inclined formation may also look like an horizontal formation. Take this image as an example that you can see the formation is just running parallel to the road. So you could be thinking that this formation is an horizontal formation but that could not be a case. For such a thing we have to confirm this with uh, tracing the formation in two or three different locations. For example if you are tracing this say this could be the outcrop what you saw and if the road say bends towards right what happens if the formation is still parallel with your road then that could be an horizontal formation but if the formation shows an inclination of some value say here it is 19 degree what happens then the formation is actually inclined and there will be a question in your mind that if it is showing 19 degree can we keep this 19 degree as a true dip then that is the answer is that no you have to still follow that point and the dip value may increase or sometimes decrease so we cannot just confirm with one point of outcrop whether the formation is horizontal or inclined and we cannot calculate the actual value of dip from single uh, section. So there will be a question in your mind then how to find the true dip in the field. So in this class we will try to calculate the true dip from the two apparent dip values that you had found from the field. And in our practical class, we will try to find out the true dip from some of the field data. At least a minimum of two dip values from the for same formation in the field is required. And there are actually three methods to calculate the true dip of the formation from two apparent dip of the formation. And the methods are say trigonometric method, geometric method and stereographic projection method. We will do the stereo projection in our next class. For today's class, we will just go with the trigonometric method as well as the geometric method. You will just try the same question with two methods and you will just confirm the answer whether it is coming actually right. Right? So let us get into the first heading that is the trigonometric method. In trigonometric method, there are actually two formulas we have to just rely upon to calculate the true dip value. The formula is that theta is equal to tan inverse of cot alpha tan beta minus cot gamma and sigma is equal to tan inverse of tan alpha by cos theta. In this formula where alpha and beta are the apparent dip values you can see here. So this is alpha and this is beta. These are the two apparent dip values that you might have measured in the field right and the gamma is the angle between the apparent dip direction. And the theta is the angle between the true dip and the apparent that is the alpha and uh, the sigma or delta whatever it is that is the true dip amount. So just substituting the values here we can find out the true dip value of that formation. So let me do one question as an example for you. So here is the question that calculate the true dip amount of a sandstone whose apparent dip values have been noted in two different locations and using trigonometric method and the values are say not 60 degree east that is the dip direction and 55 degree that is the dip amount that is in first location and in second location that is not 45 degree east and the dip amount is 65 degree as you know the formula we can just find out the values that is alpha is equal to 55 degree that is what given here that is the dip amount and beta is equal to 65 degree that is also given here and gamma is as mentioned that is the difference between the angle of the dip direction that is say 15 degree that we min minus from these two values. So by substituting this what you can find is theta is equal to 66 degree that is the angle between the true dip and the first apparent dip that is the alpha. 
and after substituting the theta value in the second formula we can simply calculate the value that is the true dip amount of the sandstone formation is 74 degree so this is how the trigonometric method works i hope this will be quite easy for you to do and if you still have doubt you can just clarify this thing with, with me in the class so we will go for the next method that is the geometric method so here what happens to calculate the true dip from the two apparent dip values what we have to do is we have to take a plane sheet on that you have to mark the four principal direction that is the north east south and west this is the very first step in as you know the ge in geometry we have to write the step by step right so this is the very first step and the second step is that we have to draw OA and OB on a given direction of the apparent dip. So if they mention the apparent dip direction, that is say not 45 degree or not 60 degree, whatever it is, whatever you mentioned as the apparent dip direction, we have to make uh, draw a line that is from starting that is O to A. That will be the first apparent dip value, and OB will be the second apparent dip, uh, sorry, apparent dip direction. And the length of the line that we are going to mark is representatively equal to the cotangent, that is the cot value of the apparent dip. In a previous case, what we saw the apparent dip value is say 45 and 60. So we have to convert that degree, that is cot of that value, to the length of the line from O to A and O to B. The next step is you have to join the A and B and draw perpendicular line to the A and B that should cross the center point that is the O. So the length between the distance between the O and D, the cot inverse of that value will be the true dip amount and the direction of OD will be the true dip direction. So this is quite simple right. So if you are uh, good with geometry you can just simply do this work and you can just cross check the answer. So we will do the previous question in this way also so you can get a clear idea. So we have to calculate the true dip amount as well as direction in this method. So we will do this. First thing what we have to do is we have to draw the line that is north east south west in a plane sheet. Then we have to mark direction OA and OB. In the question it has mentioned as north 45 degree east that is the OA and north 60 degree east that is the OB. So we had marked the two lines. And you know the length of OA should be the cot 65 that we had mentioned here that is the dip amount is 65 so cot 65 will be 0 0.46 and cot 55 will be 0 0.7 so we had marked the represent values in those lines and the next step is we have to connect O and D and we have to draw a perpendicular line so this line in this case what happened that is coming this side so we have to keep a protector or you can use the set square so we have to move the set square from here so when the set square line cuts the O, we have to just draw a line as the set square shows 90 degree. So this OD will be perpendicular to the AB. That has to be the case. So we have drawn a line that is OD which is perpendicular to AB. Okay. And we have to measure this distance. In this case, the distance is 0 0.29 centimeter. After this, what we have to do is we have to convert the discord inverse of that value. What you will get is 74 degree. So we have we can cross check the same value and in this question what they are asked is they are asked for the dip direction also. So the OD direction will be the dip direction that we had mentioned in the previous case step right. So the true dip amount is 74 degree and the dip direction is not 2 degree east. And we can also find the strike direction which is just perpendicular to the true dip. So the strike direction is not 92 degree east that also you can just mention it but that is not asked in the question so that may not be required. So this is how we have to do a sum in both trigonometric and geometric method and we have to cross check the answer. Is that clear? So if you are clear with these two methods we will go for a try. So here is the question that we have to do in our practical class. That is the calculate the true dip direction and amount of a limestone bed whose two apparent dip values has been noted in two different sections in the river cut. And using geometric method we have to calculate the true dip direction and amount and we have to use the trigonometric method to verify the answer. And the value of the apparent dip is north 90 degree east and the dip amount is 28 degree and the next one is the dip direction is north due north and the dip amount is 40 degree and the third question is calculate the true dip direction and amount of sandstone bed whose two apparent dip values has been noted 
in two different locations we have to find the true dip direction as well as the amount using geometric method and we have to verify the answer with the trigonometric method and the values are say not 80 degree west that is the dip direction and 20 degree is the dip amount and not 10 degree east is the dip direction and 40 degree is the dip amount so just try this question and you will meet in the class whatever you have doubt just mark it down you will discuss in the class thank you